Today's Light Bite is titled New Forms of Light and is presented to you by Laura Taylor. With the widespread use of LED technology, lighting has made the definitive leap into the 21st century. This has opened the doors to entirely new lighting applications in which the lighting infrastructure is becoming increasingly digital. Meanwhile, ongoing research is opening up ever more ways for lighting to improve our quality of life. This webinar is the first in a three-part series titled New Lighting Paradigms in which you can discover how Philips Lighting is pushing the envelope and exploring the benefits of next generation lighting systems for our homes, offices, hospitals, schools, stories, and cities. And now without any further ado, Laura Taylor. Hello. In this webinar, I'm going to be showing how we at Philips Lighting are developing new forms of light and how these innovations are changing the way in which spaces are lit, how they're decluttering the lighting infrastructure and providing new visual and even acoustic experiences through the innovative use of materials and new light modules. To begin with, let's look at the historical perspective of lighting. After the invention of the electric light bulb, there were no major changes in how it looked or how it was used for around a hundred years. There's a very good reason for this. Incandescent bulbs were extremely difficult to make. The filament was delicate, the glass was fragile, and the gas in which the filament sits had to be sealed in completely. The physical form of the light bulb was largely determined by these constraints and didn't really change for a century. As a result, the shape of the light bulb became so embedded in our culture that until recently it was hard to imagine anything else. And LED bulbs have adopted the same form factor even though they didn't have to. It's the same story for tube lighting. The format is intrinsically linked to the ceiling grid of offices and shops. The first fluorescent tubes were commercialized in the 1930s. Here's a picture of Philips fluorescent lamps being used in a Dutch store in 1939. And what's interesting is when you see a photo taken at a store in 2015, the format is similar to 75 years ago. Although in this picture, the fixtures actually contain LEDs instead of fluorescent tubes with all the benefits that that brings. However, a lot has changed recently in terms of technology with the coming of age of the LED. In fact, the transformation that's taking place in the lighting business is similar to the change that's occurred in many other different areas, like, for example, phones, photography, and music. The TV business is another example of an industry which was turned on its head by new technology going from analog to digital completely changed the way TV looked and behaved. People couldn't wait to ditch their old cathode ray tube TVs and own a flat screen TV. And this in turn changed the arrangement of the living room. The TV was no longer a big piece of furniture. Now it could be like a painting on the wall. And recently the glass design line TV was launched, which looks like a floating sheet of glass. So what will the shift from analog to digital really mean for lighting in terms of the form and the application of light sources? And what kind of impact will this have on our lives? The impact on our lives will be very significant. Most people only had TVs in one or two rooms in the house. Lighting, on the other hand, is everywhere. A fundamental shift in what we can do with lighting will result in completely new ways for us to interact with light throughout our daily activities more or less regardless of where we are, whether we're at home, at work, in the street, driving our cars, or when we're out with friends in a restaurant or in a cinema or a club. So let's look at how this will be made possible. Firstly, LEDs are small and emit less heat than conventional sources. This means they can be safely integrated into many materials, so not just into metal and glass, but also into combustible materials like wood or paper or fabric and materials with low melting points like plastic. This example, it's called fold, has a wood veneer over the surface. This would not have been possible using traditional light sources because they would produce too much heat. 
LEDs can also be situated in very close proximity to plastic, which can be moulded to create enhanced decorative optical effects. This is the LED candle lamp. You can see the plastic optic in the middle, which creates a sparkling effect. Secondly, through their small size and low cost, and because they don't have to be encapsulated in gas, LEDs can be distributed differently than conventional light sources. What this means is you can get illumination not just from one single light point, but from multiple points. Look at this concept bulb designed for the Philips Simplicity event, where the points of light are distributed through the bulb. And in this one, where they are distributed through a shade. This possibility to embed and distribute light points leads to much greater design freedom. This is the Cielo fixture from Luciplan. The, the light is part of the shade. There is no bulb. But the shape is very culturally relevant and would fit into many interiors. Thirdly, another superior quality of LEDs when compared to traditional sources is they require no maintenance for many years. This means we can really embed lighting into materials for the lifetime of their usage, which again opens up a whole new world of design possibilities. It means we can merge light more and more with the physical environment, so lighting becomes a material in its own right. We can embed light into surfaces, facades, and a host of other objects, above, beneath, and everywhere around us. This integration of artificial light into our environment gives a much more distributed and enveloping experience without having to add a lot of physical fixtures. And by arranging LEDs behind diffusing surfaces, we can create very uniform light fields and get appealing spatial effects. This frozen yogurt parlor in London was created by Cinnamon Lighting Design Studio, and it has color-changing light ribbons in the ceiling. And this is a light surface we designed. It's called One Space. It helps to declutter ceilings and brings a new kind of simplicity to the architectural environment. It creates smooth, light-emitting ceiling, which also improves the acoustic quality of the space because of its sound-absorbing properties. One space can make a room seem larger and more generous, as if it had an extra skylight. We can achieve similar impact with walls. These large luminous surfaces can be covered with a choice of fabrics from Quadrat, so they fit into the design of the interior when the light is off as well as on. This example here is of the reception of 200 Grays in Road in London. And if we use dark surfaces, you can create dark light, so colors like dark green or brown, which is difficult to achieve with light normally. And there are some, men there are some beautiful fabrics which have been specially designed for this application by Patricia Urquiola. They have a very open structure and an interesting texture. And we can even build light into the floor. LEDs connected to a computer and embedded in the carpet at Axel Springer Publishers function as a news ticker at the entrance of the newsroom. These luminous carpets can also be used to welcome special guests and announce events. In this way, integrated lighting is used to inform and inspire and help people navigate. This system also enhances safety in the event of an emergency. And here is an example of light embedded outside. It's a dynamic pedestrian crossing in Eindhoven in the Netherlands. It uses embedded colored light to give a visual indication of whether it's safe to cross or not. An embedded light can also be used for aesthetic and artistic purposes. In London, for instance, the creative lighting company Light Lab placed LEDs right under people's feet. Their design for a square in front of the University of Arts uses custom-made strips of LED lights to carve an abstract light pattern into the cobbled surface. So these examples of embedded light were all about light as an architectural element. Light can be also used as a component embedded in furnishings and fittings, as well as in luminaires. This is an example from a visionary project called City People Light, where we created concepts for light modules to illuminate urban furniture. So in this picture, you see some urban seating and a kind of table we called the Piazza Bollard. 
and an outdoor fireplace. And if we take a look at the home, here is the hue strip which can be stuck underneath furniture and then the light can be easily changed later using various hue apps as part of setting the scene for the whole room. When we think about embedding lighting, we can also use new ways of digital manufacturing to create small numbers of luminaires with an embedded LED module inside. Last year, Philips brought out a 3D printed luminaire with hue lighting inside. It was designed by Vertel Oberfell. And my last example is these light dresses. Here you can see light literally used as a material with flexible textile LED strips inside. These beautiful concept dresses use changing light to show mood and emotion. As these examples show, the sky's the limit in terms of the way lighting can be applied. And this is because the recent technical changes in lighting are enabling designers and architects to use light differently. A whole new portfolio of lighting elements is becoming available for lighting designers and architects. Thin surfaces of light, flexible strips of light, and small modules. From the point of view of designing an experience, there is a lot more freedom now. This, in turn, puts even greater emphasis than ever before on design. As lighting becomes steadily more ubiquitous, it's up to designers to make sure that it remains interesting without becoming overpowering, helpful without being intrusive, and relevant rather than frivolous. So to conclude, we can create new lighting experiences by creating new forms of light and by using light like a material. This is enabled by the shift to LED technology, which enables us to use different materials due to miniaturization and low heat. It enables us to multiply distribute light points due to miniaturization and low cost and it enables us to embed lighting due to the long lifetime and robustness. Thank you. Great, thank you very much, Laura. Ladies and gentlemen, don't forget, this is the first part of a three-part series, so if you haven't signed up or you're viewing this recording in some other way, please come to our website and sign up for the other two parts.